My name's Tim and this is my first attempt at a video blog post, so it's probably going to be crap, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to call this episode 1, although to be quite honest, it's not the first time I've had an episode. Anyway, in future once I'm up to speed, um, I promise 50 facts about me, uh, what's in my bag, um, plenty of hair, beard and makeup tips. Uh, I'm almost out of decent socks, so at some point there's going to be a probably a sock haul video. I'm actually really excited about that. Um, can't get much better than a good sock. Anyway, uh, I'd like to de dedicate episode 1 to New Zealand's Governor General, uh, Dame Patsy Reddy in response to her thoughtful comments about Barack Obama's upcoming visit to New Zealand at the end of March this year. Um, here's what she had to say on Television New Zealand's primetime news show. Oh, I think it will be fantastic. I don't know if I'm doing that as head of state or just me as a person, but what a wonderful, what a wonderful uh, man he has been and uh, still is, I'm sure. So terrific for New Zealand for him to be here. <laughs> In an LA Times article, Christy Parsons and W.J. Hennigan write that Barack Obama launched airstrikes or military raids in at least seven countries Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Libya, Yemen, Somalia and Pakistan. US military forces were at war for all eight years of Obama's tenure. He's the first two-term president with that distinction. Obama's administration built secret drone bases and other facilities in Africa and the Middle East. He also added troops and warships to the Western Pacific. He vastly expanded the role of elite commando units and the use of armed drones. According to articles in The Independent and The Guardian, Nobel Peace Prize recipient Obama oversaw more airstrikes in his first year than George W. Bush carried out during his entire presidency. US forces dropped over 3,000 more bombs in 2016 than in 2015, taking the grand total of strikes for 2016 to at least 26,171. That's nearly three bombs per hour, 24 hours a day, every day of 2016. The Intercept and the Huffington Post note that during one five-month period, nearly 90% of people killed in airstrikes in Afghanistan were not the intended targets. In one operation in Afghanistan between January 2012 and February 2013, US Special Operations airstrikes killed more than 200 people. Of those, only 35 were the intended targets. In Yemen and Somalia, where the US has far more limited intelligence capabilities to confirm the people killed are the intended targets, the equivalent ratios may well be much worse. In The Independent, Samuel Osborne writes that Libya, once a relatively modern country, is now home to regular public slave auctions. In an article in The Week, Ryan Cooper writes that back in 2005, the New York Times reported that President Bush had been lying through his teeth about a warrantless wiretapping program his administration had set up under the NSA. Bush urged Congress to pass a bill granting the telecoms retroactive immunity, prompting outrage from Democrats, including then-Senator Barack Obama, who promised to filibuster any bill with such an immunity provision in October 2007. But Obama blatantly broke his promise, not only failing to filibuster the bill, but actually voting for it. That act laid the groundwork for an incomprehensible move by key Democrats to vote against an amendment requiring the NSA to get a warrant before spying on American citizens. As the Snowden documents showed, 
As president, Obama embraced and in some ways expanded the Bush spying machine. His NSA used ridiculously expansive readings of legal language, data swapping with allied surveillance programs and straight up illegal behavior to sweep in huge quantities of data, including that of American citizens. Obama claimed after the revelations that there is no spying on Americans, we don't have a domestic spying program. It later turned out that not only did the NSA have a secret backdoor enabling it to search US citizens' email and phone calls without a warrant, but a previous domestic spying effort was halted by the notoriously NSA-friendly Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court in 2011, which found that it was seriously illegal and that the NSA had deceived the court repeatedly when describing the program. In other words, Obama lied. Although Trump's treatment of Mexican immigrants is appalling and likely to worsen, the deportation rate for each president is, so far, pretty similar. According to The Independent, in the first 11 months of 2017, Trump's administration deported 151,647 Mexican nationals, compared to Obama's 219,905 deportations for the same 11-month period in 2016. In July 2016, Cornell West wrote in a Guardian article that Obama had failed victims of racism and police brutality. He says, Obama's attitude is that of a neoliberal, and they really have solidarity with poor and working people. Whatever solidarity he does offer is just lip service to suffering, but he never makes it a priority to end that suffering. In December 2016, an article in The Hill suggested that Obama's inaction on the Dakota Access Pipeline shows that Native Americans are still second-class citizens. I could go on about Obama's failure to close the Guantanamo Bay detention camp despite campaign promises, his support for Saudi Arabia against Yemen, his funding, training and weapons for terrorist organizations in Syria and elsewhere, an expanded nuclear weapons budget, NATO provocations plus meddling in Ukraine and Syria, leading to a new Cold War with Russia. The DNC's cheating of Bernie Sanders in the primaries. But you get the picture. New Zealand's Governor-General Dame Patsy Reddy should not be using words like fantastic, wonderful or terrific when talking about this man. Obama is responsible for unimaginable death, destruction and suffering. And he set the scene for Trump. He's guilty of crimes he'll never be punished for, and he should not be welcome in New Zealand. Shame on our Governor-General and our government for supporting this man in any way. I think it will be fantastic. I don't know if I'm doing that as head of state or just me as a person, but what a wonderful, what a wonderful uh, man he has been and uh, still is, I'm sure. So terrific for New Zealand for him to be here. Oh, that was marvellous. That's excellent. We knew you'd agree. The companies will be very pleased. Since a video like this could only have been dreamt up by a Russian troll bent on the destruction of democracy in New Zealand and around the globe, um, I think I should end by saying Ну это всё. Спасибо всем за просмотр. Если вам понравилось это видео, то ставьте лайк и подписывайтесь на мой канал. Пока-пока.